Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Terramina, blog around the OAA, the host of Last Seed Brain Cells, and the host between two years and Oriented with Toby. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching Oriented with Toby. A lot to talk about this week here on the podcast. Um, you know, we look at, of course, the playoff push starting to get there. We're going to anal- analyze each team's playoff chances right now. Um, also, we're going to look at how the important having a um, having a big-time crowd on the road is um, for road games. And I think this will be a good, um, very interesting episode to talk about. A lot of football to talk about. I mean, like, obviously, we're getting really close to playoff time, as I mentioned. I know news to you, Goose Poops, they all released their playoff maps. Um, and some really interesting storylines. I mean, half of Snooze is stuff I don't agree with. But, but you know, because I already drew out my um, projectional, projection already. Um, I won't post it on the blog um, this right now. But we're still in the early process to um, looking at it when it comes to the playoffs. So, a lot to really look at um, when you look at playoffs. Um, i like to also give a shout out to... Um, a lot of the student bodies who have come on the road for road games, I mean, they make a big difference, especially if you're on the road. Um, you know, I, I noticed that, you know, look at Clarkson's student section, Lake Orion brings a big crowd on the road. Oxford brings a big crowd on the road. Adams, they bring a big crowd. Um, you know, Rochester, they bring a big crowd at times. I mean, like, you know, and especially when you look at those teams going from north to south, you know, having to go on the road. I mean, like, that's not an easy, you know what I mean, easy. I mean, that's not easy, but got to give a shout-out to all those student sections who have been able to make the trip on the road, um, you know, to um, to neutralize the um, home field advantage for um, for some teams. So give a shout-out to them. So, you know, so let's look at a course of storylines. I mean, obviously, we look at the red. The red has been basically decided. Oxford. Very impressive 38-14 win against West Bloomfield. Oxford right now clicking on all cylinders. Um, this is a team that really looks the part of a long playoff run, but there are some concerns when I look at Oxford. Um, really, when I look at them, um, you know, Luke Johnson's the real deal. He had three touchdowns. Jack Hendricks had a nice game. Um, Jake Champagne caught a touchdown, had a caught a touchdown, really just exposing West Bloomby defensively. I know West Bloomby is a very young team, but this has been a team that's had some problems all year long on both sides of football, considering, you know, you know, the quarterback situation between, um, with, um, Jamal Shakespeare and of course, Bo Jackson, um, Josh Chase had a nice year for West Bloomfield. Um, but I think it's more and more like. You know, I don't know what to say, how Coach Jack Hilbers looks at this, you know, this situation. Do you settle on one guy or, and that was a big question coming in the for West Bloomfield was, do you settle on one guy, you know what I mean, or do you have both guys play? So now you look at West Bloomfield, their situation, you know, obviously you look at um with their playoff chances, and I talked to Tyler Keith, the Civic Center TV, about this um earlier. Um, we talked about West Bloomfield's chances, and when I look at the postseason chance for West Bloomfield, if they can win one or two, um, I think they will be in the playoffs. I really do. I mean, they got to play Celine, and they got to uh, sorry, they got to play um Seaholm and um and um Roseville. I mean, like those are the two teams they got to play, and um, if they win one or two, I think they're safely in. But I can't. But if they lose both games, you know they're they're going to be out. I mean, considering you know you look at the race right now in the playoffs, West Bloomfield they sit twenty seventh right now, and the win against Lake Orion is huge for them at the moment. I mean, that's the game that really has them, you know, clicking is that win against Lake Orion, and I think it'll be really interesting to see how. Um, you know, West Bluebeal does, especially this week against Seaholm. But they clearly against Oxford, they just did not look very good at all. I mean, like, that's a playoff bubble team for sure. And I know for West Bloomfield fans, they don't want to hear it. But if they lose to Seaholm and if they lose to Roseville, 
Both games are on the road, and they might be on the outside looking in. I mean, that's a, that's a scenario that West Bloomfield put themselves in at 3-4, and 1-3 and three in the red. And it's a very tough scenario if you're West Bloomfield, considering, you know, you look at the rest of the, of the red division, um, all four teams um, besides West Bloomfield right now are pretty safe. When I look at, of course, Lake Orion, I look at Clarkston, I look at Adams, and I look at, um, you know, Oxford. I mean, all four of those teams right now are are safe in the playoffs. I mean, obviously, you know, you really look at, and then West Bloomfield right now, they're in right now, but if they lose those next two games, or if they win one of the two games, I would consider them safe. But as of right now, I would consider them right now, they're in a not safe category um, when I look at West Bloomfield. Um, in their postseason chances. So a lot of questions for West Bloomfield right now when it comes to the postseason. I mean, they have to win one for sure this week. If they don't, they're in some trouble. Uh, if they w- if they lose both of them, they're done. I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, their season's done if they don't win both. Now, if West Bloomfield were to get in, where do you see them? Do you probably see them go play nobody at Detroit Catholic Central? It's a possibility. I mean... You know, that's been a real possibility. That's if West Bloomfield gets in the playoffs. So, you know, but still, you know, West Bloomfield right now, they're in a really difficult spot right now when I look at them, um, especially with how everything's been in the red right now. Um, and then the other game i talk about was Lake Orion 2013 against Clarkston. Um, a lot of controversy in this game considering the rule. Um, and the final play of the game, um, you know, you kind of, you know, there were a lot of people, you know, I mean, and I had, and I looked at the rule a little, I looked at the rule, um, the offsetting penalties, um, you know, people are going to say, well, it's Clarkson, you know, with the offsetting penalties, they get an extra play. I mean, like, but it, it, it just, it's, I'm got to go with what the official says. You got to go with what he says, um, you know, in the game and, you know, and the, and he, and he felt, you know what I mean, like, and they felt, you know what I mean, the offsetting penalties, you know what I mean. I mean, with no time left, game's over. So, you know, so I know, so I feel, uh, I feel bad for Coach Jeff Pitar and Clarkson. Um, but for Lake Orion, it's a big win for them. Um, you know, now you look at the playoff scenario for both Lake Orion and Clarkson. I did say this earlier. Um, Lake Orion right now, Lake Orion's pretty much a lock, and. The reason why I say this is because the win against Northville is huge at the moment for them. They have a win against Adams. I mean, they do have, um, you know, and, and, and when you look at a course, and now you have the win against Clarkston, that's big for them, for them where they're sitting at. They're sitting pretty nicely. They're the best 5-2 and two team right now in Division One. They got more playoff points than Oxford, um, considering, you know, that Northville win, as I mentioned, that's right now – very critical at the moment. You know, people say, well, Oxford won the red this year to beat Lake Orion, but Lake Orion's got more playoff points than Oxford because of the, their win week one against Northville. So that's really where, you know, you have Lake Orion right now, right now ninth in Division One. Oxford sits at 11th right now because of the, um, because of Lake Orion's win week one against Northville. That's really what the difference is right now when you look at the um, playoff point scenario. Uh, for Clarkston, they sit... At 18th right now, um, four and three, the best four and three team right now. I mean, they're guaranteed a lock. I, I really think Clarkston. Um, you know, I'm I'm not too worried about what Clarkston when it comes to playoff position. People say, you know, four and three, not good. You know what I mean? Should I worry about the playoffs for Clarkson? Relax. That's what I would say to him right now. Relax. Clarkston is safe. They are in the playoffs. That win against Oxford's huge for them. I mean, you got to relax if you're Clarkson because, like, you know, your playoff your playoff chances, you, you're already at 100%. I mean, like, I'm already looking at Clarkson's scenario right now and saying, like, okay, you know what I mean? It's For them, it's about where are they going in the playoffs. That's where I would say. I know they got that week nine game with you guys that are coming up. Um, they got week eight against Bloopy Hills. But when I look at, Clarkson's pass. I mean, like, could it? Could they send Clarkson north? I think that's the best case scenario for them. They go east. That could be. That's another option. I mean, last year they went east. Um, 
could they go south to play Nova, Detroit, Catholic Central? I think that a lot of that depends on West Bloomfield, how they are. But when I look at Clarkston's pass, I mean, like, right now, if, you, if you're if you telling me if Clarkston's not making the playoffs, you're kidding yourself. They are making the playoffs. I am not worried about. No concerns with Clarkson when it comes to that. With that, I mean, like, um, scenario, they're going to be in the playoffs. I mean, like, you know, they're the best 4-3 and three team right now in D1. So, I, if I, if, I mean, like, so if you're Clarkston, you're fine. I'm not worried about you guys at all. Really not. Um, Lake Orion right now, yes, they got Farmington and Celine coming up. Um, playoff positioning, I think they're secure right now. Um, but, you know, for them, it's about home games. You win out, you're, you're guaranteed at least one home game for sure, maybe two. Um, but that's really where it is right now when you look at the Dragon scenario um, as of right now. So that's my take on that. And then Adams, you know, you look at Rochester Adams at 21. Um, Adams and Stony Creek was the um, other game to keep an eye on. Um, 21-13 in favor of Adams and over Stony Creek. Um, big win for Adams without quarterback Ryland Waters. I've been hearing a lot of rumblings. You know, could he be back for the playoffs? That is a possibility. I have heard a lot of rumblings surrounding that. Um, but when I look at Adams, um, this is a team that found a way to win a game, you know what I mean, that they needed. And it was in front of the, it was I think it was their homecoming. I'm not sure if it was their homecoming game or not, but I think it was. Um but credit to coach Tony Petrino, you know what I mean? You know, they I mean they have a Mateo Humbert, Latchner Tillerson. I mean, offensive line had a big game. Defense played well, shutting down a good Stony Creek offense, led of course by Sam Fogler. Um and they have two really good linemen in um Francis Beckman and um Peyton Rumbler. So when I look at when I look at that for Adams, they're secure and they're secure enough in the playoffs that they're twelfth they're twelfth right now. They're pretty much safe. They got um North Farmington this week. They got New Baltimore, Anchor Bay to close out the year. That game's on the road. So Adams right now, I I would say they're in a good spot right now. I really think Rochester Adams is in a really really good spot. To get in the playoffs, I put them in the safe category, easily safe. Um, they're one of the four teams in the red that I consider safe at the moment right now. Now, with Stony Creek, this is interesting because when I look at the Cougars and you look at where they sit right now, they're three and four right now, but they're the last team in in Division One. They're at 32nd. They got two interesting games coming up. They got Avondale on the road, and then they got um, Ann Arbor here on the close out the year. So when I look at Stony Creek and say, okay, if they win one or two, I think they're going to be okay. If they win both, they're okay. They lose both, they're, they're gone. If they lose both games, if they lose one, win one, they're going to be, it'll be really close. So when I look at Stony Creek's scenario, when I look at their, when I look at the Cougars scenario, Stony Creek, if they win both games and they look very winnable, Avenue will be an interesting game for them. It'll be really interesting. But they, it's an interesting when you look, spot when you look at the Division I seedings. When you look at the teams in there, you got Jenison. Jenison came off a, Jenison has been a weird team to figure out all year long. They've been really weird. I mean, they they lose to Holland West Ottawa, who sits one and six right now, and then they knock off Rockford on the road in an upset, and then they just go and upset Caledonia last week. So that kind of tells you something about Jenison. Jenison's a weird team to figure out. They are a really weird team to figure out. And then you look at, of course, Kalamazoo Central and Kalamazoo Lady, I mean, Lloyd Norx. Those two teams play each other this week. They, they do play each other next week, actually, week nine. They play each other next week. So that could be an elimination game. But they're right now on the outside looking in. Really are. Then there's Chippewa Valley. Chippewa Valley right now sits at three and four. Rough start to the year. 
Lost week one to West Bloomfield. They were just completely throttled. But the win that's got them going right now is Utica Eisenhower. The Utica Eisenhower wins huge for them at the moment. So that's another team to really keep an eye on is Chippewa Valley, considering their schedule coming up. I haven't looked at their schedule yet, but it'll be interesting to see how that one goes. And then, of course, there's Utica. Utica, of course, um, they're at 3-4 and four right now on the outside looking in. Troy I'll talk about in a couple minutes, considering where they're at right now. So when I look at Stony Creek situation right now, you win both games, you're in the playoffs. If you go one and one you're kind of teetering a little bit between the outside looking in. So if I'm Coach Rick Powell, I'm basically saying <laughs> is when I look at the Cougars, if you win both games, you're in. If you win one, you might be teetering. You know what I mean? If you lose to Avondale, beat Ann Arbor here on, I think you're in. But Avondale's a big, big game for Stony Creek because of the playoff positioning, because where they're at right now. Um, if they lose that game to Avondale, they're going to have to beat Ann Arbor here on, and it still might not be enough. So for Stony Creek to be on the safe end of things, I know I said in the blog, I said one and two, but if you win both games against um, Avondale and Ann Arbor here on, you're in a really, really good spot right now. So that's what I would say right now with Stony Creek right now, a team that's in the playoff bubble right now, um, considering where they're at right now. So, yeah, Stony Creek right now sitting really, they're on the, they're teetering right now, but they're on that, they're, they're that last team in Division One right now. So, We'll see how that one goes there. And then we have the Troy Colts. So when I look at Troy, terrible loss for Troy to Farmington. 32-23 was that score on that Thursday night. Farmington was the better team for about maybe two and three and a half quarters in that one. And then Troy started picking things up, got it within tw two points, 25-23, couldn't recover the onside kick. Farmington, Farmington then goes and goes um, runs the ball down there down the sideline and seals the deal, winning that game, 32-23. So when I look at Troy's situation, I kind of think about with them is okay. You have to beat Troy Athens this week. <laughs> you have to because if you don't beat Troy Athens, you're pretty much done. It won't matter that North Farmington game. Might not matter week nine. North Farmington right now, they're rolling in D2 right now. They are rolling. Starting off 0-2 after losses to Ferndale and Livonia Stevenson. Now look where they're at. I mean, Ferndale, we're going to talk about them in a little bit. But when I look at Troy's situation, you, you toughen up your schedule. You're playing, you played Lake Orion and Pontiac Notre Dame prep. Span it two weeks. You lose both those games with those two games should have prepared you. And then you play then you play Farmington. Farmington, I mean, yes, starting quarterback, I'm Julian Johnson, he's done for the year. But Anthony Bailey's done a really nice job. Really taking over that reign of quarterback for Farmington. And look where they're at right now. They're sitting real nice at five and two. Now, with division two, I'll talk about that in a minute. But what's back to Troy's case here? Troy here, when I look at the Colts, here's a team that, you know, coming into the year, people say, okay, how's Troy going to look? How's this team going to look? You got an experienced quarterback. You got an experienced receiver slash secondary player in Jalen Peacock. You got a good lineman in Lucas Tick. And then all of a sudden, like, you're looking at this team and you're saying, okay, you know, you got some good wins. You're right now clicking. Then you run into Lake Orion Notre Dame Prep. Two losses there. Two very tough losses there. But the one that Farmington right now, that's the one that's hurting them right now. And then the one that Seaholm is also the one hurting. You're, they're sitting at three and four right now. They're sitting at three and four. So you think about it. <laughs> you got Troy Athens this week. And you got North Farmington next week. Win both games. You're going to be, 
Probably now, you're probably going to be in the playoffs. You win both games. If you lose both games, you're done. You lose one of the two games, you're done. That's really how I look at it with Troy. Because right now, they're on the outside looking in. I mean, they got to jump some teams. I mean, yeah, Kalamazoo Central and Kalamazoo um, Lloyd North, they play each other week nine. But Troy, they're in a tough spot right now. Really difficult spots when I look at Troy. Really much is. So when you look at that scenario there for Troy, they have to win both games if they want to be in the playoffs. And they missed the postseason last year after their loss to Frazier. So this is a must-win game for Troy. Is They got to knock off their arch rival at home. Then their next two games are at home. They got North Farmington at home, and they got Troy Athens at home. So it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Really much will be. So Troy's path right now, I think for them, they have to win out. For, you know, for them, they have to win out. Let's go to Division 2 now. I mean, you look at Division 2, you know, big one for North Farmington. Over Seaholm, 24-23, crazy game there. Terrence James, three touchdowns, touchdown runs for um, the Raiders. Um, had to overcome some weird mishaps in that game. I mean, Seaholm tried to go for two. Um, I kind of honestly would have thought, in my opinion, for Coach Jim Dewall, kick the extra point, take him to overtime, you know, 24-24, Force the force the issue, go to overtime and win it. You know what I mean? You know, and then and then um you go to overtime, you know what I mean, and try to win it there. You know, Rochester and Stony Creek, they went to overtime a couple weeks ago, and Rochester has not been the same team since that Stony Creek game. They have not been the same team since that game. I mean, they were just annihilated by Harper Woods, 44-15. Now a lot of that with Harper Woods is Nate Rushnell's back. And that says a lot right there. I kind of got a feeling with Harper Woods, and I watched that Rochester game with them, um, was Dakota Grant, a big game, he had three touchdowns. Um, he caught three and then ran for one. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, and I know Coach Oden might not like me for this, but I think Dakota Grant's better off at wide receiver than at quarterback. And the reason why I say this is because, you know, heck of an athlete. Heck of a player. Good player. But Nate the, but Nate Washington there at quarterback, you, it makes you feel whole. It makes you stable. You know what I mean? So that's what I would say with Harper Woods right now. Harper Woods right now, safe in D4 right now. They are safe right now. They're going to be in the, in the playoffs in D4. Um, defend their title. I think Goodrich is their biggest challenger. Um, so it'll be a challenge for them right now. With Harper Woods there. Now I want to go from back from D4 to D2. So back to North Farmington. North Farmington right now. They right now sit real nicely right now. They're 5-0. and 5-2. Oh, and two. So when I look at the Raiders. Um, they do have Adams this week. And then they, and then they um, close out the year at Troy. Two tough games. Two really tough games. They're safely in the postseason field. They really are. So when I look at the Raiders situation, the win against Seaholm basically put them into the playoffs. That's basically where, if you're Coach John Herstein, that says a lot. That says a lot to where this team has been, especially the last few years, where they have not, they, they haven't gotten the job done. They haven't gotten the job done. So when I look at the scenario there, when I look at the playoffs there, and you think about it, you really think about it, is you put North Farmington right now, you got to see where they're going in the playoffs. You got to see. Will they host a home game? I don't know. I really don't know. But they're in a nice spot right now. Groves obviously is in a very good spot. Um, number one seed. Only thing I'm concerned about with them 
Um, only thing I'm concerned about with Groves, they're fourth in Division Two right now. Only thing I'm concerned about them is they're um, they haven't been really been tested, and lately they haven't been tested. That's a concern for me for Coach Brendan Flaherty and his team. I mean, you look at the path where they might have to see. They might have to play our tribal C home. They might have to deal with um, Warren De La Salle in the future. Warren De La Salle, we know, is a very dangerous football team. And Groves might have to deal with them. Possibly in a state semifinal. Depends where they put Groves. Really depends where they put them. See home right now, fifth right now after the in D2 after the loss of North Farmington. Playoff bait secure at the moment right now. They got West Bloomfield coming up, and then they got Groves. Tough slate coming up for them. But they're safely in the playoffs. Um, in D2. Now this is where it gets interesting. Farmington. When I look at Farmington, Farmington wins one of their next two games. They got a tough one with Lake Orion, though, week eight. They got a tough one. A really tough matchup with them. If they knock off Dearborn Heights Crestwood, I think they're in. They're going to be in the playoffs. So I kind of looked at the reason why I had Farmington safe because of um, early on until late Sunday night. I looked at, and credit the Goose Poops here. He does a really good job with this playoff wizard. Um, really, so I looked at Farmington scenarios, and I wrote down if they won both games, they would be a lock. If they win one or two, they would still be in the playoffs. But if they lose both games, then they're on the outside looking in. So that's kind of the reason why I put not safe on there for Farmington. It's because of the, um, it's because there's that possibility they could lose both games. Now, I don't think they're going to lose both games because I don't see them losing the Dearborn Heights Crestwood. I'd be shocked if they did lose that game. But for Farmington, you know, they're kind of in that danger category a little bit. I'm not saying they're not to the extreme levels of like a West Bloomfield or a Stony Creek is or a Troy even. But Farmington, they still got that danger a little bit. I mean, like, so, but I still consider Farmington, you know, bare, I mean, between bubble and not safe category yet. Because when I look at it's because of that scenario, if they lose both games. Um, then there could be that could be a real, real problem for Farmington if they lose both those games. So to Lake Orion and also Dearborn Heights Crestwood. So they win one or two, they're in. I mean, they win one or two, they're in. And you know, right now for Coach Jason Albright, that's really what the scenario looks like right now for Farmington at the moment. So right now for them, win one or two, you're likely in the playoffs. Win both, you're definitely in the playoffs. You lose both, you might be on the outside looking at. Now we look at Ferndale. Ferndale, I mean, you look at them this year. The win against North Farmington is huge for them at the moment. I mean, you really look at the scenario how that is. Um, I think that the I think that that win at North Farmington, at Ron Holland, says a lot for Coach um, Eric Royal's team right now. I think with Ferndale, I mean, like, you look at the schedule coming up. They got to play um A and T this week, and then they got Utica Ford to close out the year. Um, I they win both games, they're in the playoffs. They win both games, they're in the playoffs. If they win one or two, I think they're in. Um, if they lose both, they're out. So really, Ferndale is kind of that same situation. Farmington's in. Um, so. If they, right now, both Ferndale and Farmington are both in the playoffs. So when I look at their scenarios, I mean, if for them, for both those two teams, it's just win one or two. You win one or two, you're in a good, good spot. So when I look at Farmington's case right now, that's where they're at. Is they have, and both Farmington and Ferndale's cases, that's where they're at. Win one or two of your final two games, you're in the playoffs. If you lose both, you're done. That's really what it is. So that's a scenario that I see for both Farmington and Ferndale. 
Um, kind of that, you know what I mean, that situation where, you know, it's going to really toughen up. Now, A&T is a Division One game for, is a Division One opponent for Ferndale. So that is a golden opportunity right now. So Ferndale, they're in Division Two. So the reason why I say for Ferndale, the reason why they're in D2 is because of the co they co-op with Ferndale University. You know, so you look at the enrollment based on that situation, there, there's not only the kids from Ferndale there that gets counted, but also the kids from Ferndale University gets counted on there. Coach Eric Royal and I, we talked a lot about this um, a couple years ago on the podcast. So really, so really, when you look at that situation, um, you know, that's how it is right now. So Ferndale U, for, for, for Ferndale right now, they're in an interesting spot because they get in the playoffs, you know, they're probably looking at possibly playing in North Farmington, playing at Groves, you know what I mean, in the first round. I mean, it'll be a tough matchup, I mean, considering where Ferndale's been, um, playing those type of teams. So we'll see where they're at right now going forward there. Um, now let's look at Avondale. I mean, Avon, let's look at Division Three. So when I look at Avondale, in Division Three, it kind of they sit right now 14th in Division Three. They started off 0 and 2 with losses to Cedar Springs and Seaholm. Cedar Springs right now sits, I believe, they are six and one right now. Um, whereas in Seaholm's case, they're also six and one. So pretty not bad losses for Avondale. You know, not too bad losses for them. This is a golden opportunity for them right now against Stony Creek because. When I look at the remaining two games, they play um, Stony Creek this week and then Carlton Airport next week. Um, and they both those games are in Auburn Hills, so that does help Avondale's case. So when I look at that matchup, when I look at Avondale's case, Avondale, I think they're safe in Division Three right now at the moment. I think they're safe. I mean, now, they might have to go to Wall Lake Western, might have to go to May. I mean, like, you know, that could be a very interesting matchup there if they um, if Avondale played... Um, Wall Lake Western, um, like they did last year. Unfortunately for um, Coach Bob Meyer, um, they ended up following that one, the Wall Lake Western. So that could be a team that Avondale might play. Um, I know Coach Meyer, he knows that area very well, especially when he's at Wall Lake Central. Um, so when I look at Avondale's case there, I mean, for them to be in the playoffs, they got a good case. I mean, they got a compelling case. I mean, the 0 2 start. I mean, like, they're a much different team with Cooper Volfrey and Justin Greer Sykes. Um, their quarterback situation looks like they figured it out. Their defense has been very good as of late for Avondale. So when I look at the situation for the Yellow Jackets, they're kind of in that, they're in a really nice spot right now, but they can improve on that positioning. Um, if they can get one, they can get two wins, would be huge for them. You know, getting a home game would be absolutely critical for Coach Bob Meyer's team considering where they're at right now. Um, so that would be really critical at the moment for them. So, you know, so for Avondale, it's win out. If they win out, they're going to get in the postseason. Uh, I mean, if they win out, they're going to like try to get a home game in the postseason. If not, they're going to have to go on the road. So right now, when I look at Avondale's situation, they're safe right now when it comes to postseason. Um, so when I look at Avondale, that's where I see them right now. Safe, safe, but when it comes to home field, not so safe. So, you know, so right now, I'm not sitting at 14th right now um, in the um, postseason positioning um, for Division Three. So they are in a really nice spot when it comes to the postseason for Avondale. So really, um, but if they get a big one against Stony Creek, that's going to really go up significantly because Stony Creek's a D1 opponent. Um, but it also damaged Stony Creek's playoff hopes. Um, and then you got Carlton Airport team that <coughs> they're in Division Four. Um, rebuilding a little bit. They had a new coach, new system. I think they're right now. They sit right now at two and five. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, for Amna, but right now they're in a really nice spot right now. Um, uh, when it comes to the standings. Um, let's go to Harper Woods. I mentioned them earlier. Um, Harper Woods coming off um. Two really good wins against A and T and um, and Rochester. I did watch that Rochester game. Um, Harper Woods went all air raid on him. I mean, having a quarterback I think Rochester back that's big for them. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, 
Dakota Grant had a nice game. He had three touchdowns. Um, so I get what Harper Woods was doing. The, the problem I had with the Pioneers, and this has been a big, big problem all year long for them, has been penalties. They have not been a disciplined team, you know, and that's been a big problem. And you look at why this team sits right now, where they're at right now, at four and three, is because of their discipline. Their, their discipline. You see where they're at right now when it comes to their discipline. You look at the losses to Oxford. Penalties killed them. Nobody Detroit Catholic Central. Penalties killed them. Groves. Penalties killed them. I mean, you really look at those three losses and you say to yourself, is what if? I mean, especially in the Groves game where what if Nate Washington played? If he played in that game, is that a different story? I mean, like, we don't know. I mean, like, you know, obviously we know how good Groves is and Harper Woods right now, when I look at them, you know, they're getting ready for um, a path to the postseason. Right now, this is a team that sits eighth in Division IV. Um, there are some concerns when I look at Harper Woods, especially maybe having to deal with a team like DeWitt. Um, you know, DeWitt right now, I think, is the top team in Division IV. There's always that Goodrich issue where Harper Woods could have to deal with them. And then there's Madison Heights Lampier. Lampier right now, the way that they're playing, I know Coach Roy Ozerowski extremely well. Um, could they be a team that could go into Harper Woods' um, district? And if they do, Harper Woods would have to go to Madison Heights considering, you know, the playoff point scenario is right now for Harper Woods. Because those three losses, you know, to all three are very good teams, don't get me wrong, but that's where they're at right now. I mean, that's where Harper Woods is sitting right now. Now, having Nate Marshall backs big, you have, a, you have wide receiver Dakota Grant, that's big. I mean, your defense has gotten better, especially in the last two weeks, where your um, where Harper Woods is, um, you know, their defense. They've only allowed twenty one points in the last um two weeks, which is pretty good. Um, now they get Pontiac. Pontiac's really been struggling all year long, and you know, and I and they've really been struggling. So I don't know if that's going to help Harper Woods. Now, yes, Pontiac's in D four, um. But I, I just don't know how they're go that's going to help Harper Woods. And then by the team that they do play week nine um, is um, Coach Odin's old stepping grounds at Detroit East English Village Prep, who they play week nine. Of course, they're battling for a playoff spot. Um, I think they're in D3. So when I look at that matchup between them, um, and it's also a close, it's also a close distance for Harper Woods um, taking on um, the um, Detroit East English Village prep. I mean, like, it's a very close distance. Of course, they're separated not too far. I think about by five, five, six miles um, with um, East English traveling up north to Harper Woods. So, when I look at the Pioneers playoff scenario, I mean, they could go south. Um, they could, but it's also that possibility last year when they went north, possibly having to deal with Crosswood Lex again, going up north to the, um, you know, taking on the dumb area teams. You got Marysville's in there. I mean, it could be a very interesting path for Coach Rob Odin and the, and the Pioneers. But they are guaranteed in the playoffs. But I will be curious to see where the MHA seeds them. I mean, they see, they sit at eight right now in Division Four. Um, so it would be really interesting to see where the MHA would put Harper Woods in the postseason. Now, their next two games... They should win both those games. Um, if they don't win both those games or one of those games, they're going to likely be on the road, um, which if you're Coach Rob Oden, that's not a good omen. If you have to start your pro season on the road, they might have to go to Madison Heights in the playoffs, might have to see Goodrich. I mean, so there's a lot of challenges ahead for Coach Rob Oden. And the first thing he's got to do with that team is clean up the penalties because that is clearly been the biggest problem for Harper Woods right now. Um, is clearly been the penalties. So that's really has to, if he can clean that up, um, you know, if they can stay disciplined, then I think Harper Woods could be a team that really they could really make some noise in this division, um, in Division Four, and I think they're gonna make some noise. So that's my take on the playoff scenario for each of the teams. Um. When I look at the playoffs, playoff positioning for each team, Division One, I, I would say right now, Lake Orion, Adams, Oxford, 
Um, right now, they look safe right now, and I think they're going to be safe um, in the postseason there. Um, and then you look at, of course, you know, Stony Creek's a team that's on the bubble right now. Um, Troy is on the out. West Bloomfield's a team that's also on the bubble. Um, and then Troy is on the outside looking in. That's in D1 right now. D2, Grove, Seaholm are locks. Um, Ferndale's a bubble team right now. Um, in D2, North Farmington's a lock. Farmington's a, um, a, um, close to safe, but still a little bit of that danger category for them. Um, and then you look at, um, Division 3, Avondale's a lock. And then D4, Harper Woods is the lock. So right now, those are the playoff teams right now that are teams that are right now in or on the bubble right now. So, you know, so when you look at the playoff scenario, that's where each team is. Um, I will have a, um, I will have my um, projections out next week with the blog um, when it comes to playoff projection where I think each team's going to go uh, within those playoff teams um, right now or those bubble teams right now. So. This is why these next two weeks are going to be really important um, as we get into the playoffs and the playoff heat right now when you look at it. Um, so let's look at the games this week. I mean, let's look at all the games this week here um, for week eight. We're going to start off, of course, it's the crossover games. Um, you got red against blue. You got, um, and then, of course, white against gold. So, you know, so we know there's two teams right now that are, um, going out of um going out of league this week. So, you know, so it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. And, you know, and I and let's start off with the games here. We're gonna start off with um Ferndale and Southfield Arts and Tech. And this one's an interesting one. It's a big game for Ferndale. A and T, obviously you look at the um, opportunities they have um you know to try to get their first one of the year. A and T's really been struggling all year long. Um, did not look very good last week against Har against um, you know, against Groves. I mean, like forty two twelve with that score. Groves won that one over A and T. Um, difference in that game was the first half from Groves. Um, for thirty five nothing, just smoothed in. But there's a positive for A and T. They won the second half twelve seven. Um, so that should be interesting. There, I'm gonna take Ferdinand on this one. Being at home. I think the Eagles um, make a statement, obviously, with the play, um, their experience. Um, Colin Hawk at quarterback, I think he's going to make a difference there in that one here. So I'm taking Fern down that one over a &T. Groves and Royal Oak. I ask myself, why? Why? Because you look at Royal Oak. Royal Oak, they, they won 38-12 against Pontiac last week on their homecoming. Um... But when I look at, now you get to play from Pontiac to Groves. That's a complete different, like the 360 from like, you know, Pontiac's a team that's really been struggling. Groves is arguably the best team in the league. Um, but, as I mentioned, Royal Gro with Groves, had they been battle tested? I don't know if they've been battle tested or not. I mean, I don't know if they've gotten, if they've gotten complacent, they've gotten hungry. I don't know. I mean, like, you know. It's just the competition for Groves right now doesn't look as great as I thought it would be. Um, but, and I don't think Groves is going to have an issue with Royal Oak in this one. You know, they got Seahome coming up week nine. So we're going to know a little bit about them. But I really look at the eyeball test and say, well, the week one game against UD Jesuit, the week two game against West Bloomfield. But I don't know if West, West Bloomfield is not the same team they've been. Um, in years past, but Groves, I think, can, um, but right now, Groves, they're clicking, and they're on their way to an undefeated season, um, if things go right, so I'm gonna take Groves in this one impressively against Royal Oak, they're gonna keep on that momentum, heading in their game with Seahome, I mean, heading on their game with Seahome, so that should be really, really interesting to see how that one goes, so. We'll see how that one goes for sure um, between Groves and um, see, um, Groves and Royal Oak because Gro Groves might use that game as a, um, that could be a trap game. I, I don't think it will be a trap game, but 
You never know. Then you have Berkeley and Rochester. Berkeley did not look very good last week, losing 49-7 to Avondale. Um, Avondale, we know, is a very good team. We know that they're very good. I mean, there's no doubt about it that they're a very good team. Rochester did not look very good against Harper Woods. I mean, I looked at Jack Lauer's fumble against Harper Woods. Um, that pretty much told me the whole story. It's Berkeley's pink out game. I think Berkeley's wearing special uniforms. Not sure what Coach Eric Vernon's doing um, with, with his uniform choice yet. Rochester's not been the same team since the um, Stony Creek loss. Um, just that overtime loss. So when I look at this game here, do I am I tempted to take the upset here for Berkeley against Rochester? I'm not. So I'm gonna take Rochester here in this one against Berkeley. I just think that, you know, Jack Lauer, he has a bounce back game. I think he has a monster game and I think he explodes um for a couple touchdowns in this one. I think I think Rochester goes in and wins that game. Um they close out the year with Wall Lake Northern. Um, which looks very winnable for Ro for me with Rochester. So, you know, so Rochester right now, I think they're looking, um, you know, we'll see what happens, but it doesn't look good for Rochester based on a playoff point perspective right now. They're sitting at two and five. So we'll see what happens. They could finish out strong, finish out the year four and five. That'd be really good. That'd be a, that'd be a, you know, I'd be a, you know what I mean? Like, um, but still, a rough, a rough year for them, especially with the expectations they've had um, coming into this season. So <laughs> we'll see how that one goes. Um, Harper Woods and Pontiac. Harper Woods looks really good in those pink jerseys. They look, ex they look really good in those pink jerseys. I mean, the helmet, the black, the black helmet, the black, um, black game pants with the pink out, with the pink uniform, looks extremely good on them. I think Harper Woods continues that stretch in October. Wearing pink is always a good color for them against Pontiac. They're going to roll on this one. I just don't see how Pontiac matched up with Harper Woods at all. So, that could be a blowout in that one for sure. Bloomfield Hills and Clarkston. You know, 28-25, Bloomfield Hills fell to um, Troy Athens last week. It was a really interesting matchup. Now, for Coach Dan Loria... You got to go ahead to Fleming's Lake Road to take on an angry, upset Clarkson team. Clarkson's coming off a 20-13 loss to Lake Orion. And you know they're incensed. You know they're ticked. And their defense has really impressed me the last few weeks. I mean, like, now, honestly, I thought the defense for Clarkson was their greatest weakness. It might still be. Up front's been a big problem for Clarkson. It's been a big, big problem for them. Knowing Coach Justin Pintar, he has to shore that up. You had the Bowman Twins. Both Bowman Twins struggled against Lake Orion last week. I think a lot of that, you got to credit Lake Orion's defense. Now, Lake Orion did not do a good job against Alex Wachensko. I thought Wachensko, he had a really nice game. Especially running the ball. Went over 100 yards rushing. That says something right there. Really does. But Bloomie Hills is not like Ori. Really is not. So I expect Clarkson to go in the on their home field. I expect this game to be over pretty much by about by halftime. I got Clarkson winning this one pretty convincingly. Pretty convincingly. So that's my take on that game. Then we have the Battle of Troy. Troy and Troy Athens. Oh boy. This is a big, big game for Troy. For several reasons. You look at Troy's playoff chances. They took a severe hit last week in that loss to Farmington. And I mean it. For Troy Athens, this is about spoiling your arch rival season. Running the misdirection offense against a defense that did not look very good last week against Farmington. 
they did not look good at all. When you allowed 25 points in the first half against a team that's against a Farmington team that's got a lot of speed, but also without their starting quarterback in Julian Johnson, that's not good at all. And then you basically see your secondary just basically get literally exposed. I asked myself this question, where in the world was Lucas Tinka on the defensive side of the football? Where was he there? I asked that question. I mean, because I know Tick plays both ways. He plays on the offensive line, he plays on the defensive line. So I was really shocked with how Farmington came into Troy and basically took apart a very good defense. Now, albeit they did struggle against them. Um, they did struggle. I mean, Troy came back, got it within two, but this can get the onside kick. So when I look at this game here, for Troy, as I mentioned, the playoff chances, they win this game. They got a bigger one next week with North Farmington. If they don't win, their season's done. I went back and forth, thought about it. I'm going to take Troy in this one. I'm going to take the Colts in this one. I think they get the job done against the arch rival Red Hawks. Um, I don't know the direction Troy Athens is going. Even though they got that win against Booby Hills last week, there's still some question marks with them. So I'm going to take the um, Colts in this one over the Red Hawks. I'm setting up a bigger game for Troy next week in that one. Um, Stony Creek and Avondale. Big one for both teams. Big one. For Avondale, it's playoff position. Getting a home game. I mean, that's all it is for Coach Bob Myers' team. It's playoff position and getting a home game. For Stony Creek, this is about getting in the playoffs. You win this game, you're pretty much locked in, in Division One. You're pretty much locked in playoffs. Now, winning two games would be beautiful for them. Would be beautiful for them if they can win both games. I like Stony Creek in this one because of Peyton Rumbler and because of Spencer Beekman. Because of Sam Fogler as well. I think Sam Fogler has a big game here against a very experienced defense. This is going to be Avondale's biggest test of the year. It's going to be their biggest test. Taking on an experienced line up front. A team that can run virtually almost anything against you. This will be Avondale's biggest test. Because Stony Creek is not a Berkeley, a Royal Oak, or a Pontiac, or a Ferndale. They got a good offense. Their defense has been better, getting better, all been getting better. This is going to be a good game. I think it'll be a really good game at Dick By Field. It'll be a really good game over there between Avondale and Stony. It'll be a really good game. Then we have Oak Park and Oxford. Oxford's going to win this one. I think Luke Johnson's a big game. I think Jack Hendricks is a big game. I think Dean Rice is a big game. Jake Champagne has a big game. Oak Park <laughs> coming off a 26-12 loss to Pier. Basically saw their postseason dreams get ripped. I mean, I don't see an avenue for Oak Park in the playoffs. I really don't. So, I'm taking Oxford in this one against Oak Park. Um, this is going to be Pretty convincing game. I think Oak Park win. I think Oxford wins this one over Oak Park. Um, it's gonna be a blowout at Wildcat Stadium. So, good folks at OCTV are gonna have a really nice game to watch. Celebration for Oxford winning the red this year. Um, so getting ready for the playoffs. So, but they got a big one looming Macomb Dakota next week. We're gonna preview that one next week. So we'll see how that one goes. Then we have Lake Orient and Farmington. Big game, especially for Farmington. Um, for Lake Orient, it's you win both games, you got multiple home games. <laughs> That's really what it is for Lake Orient. For Farmington, win one or two, you're in. You're safe at the moment. But you win one or two, you're basically in. Do I see Farmington winning this week against Lake Orion? Probably not. I think T.R. Hill has a big game here against Farmington's defense. Um, 
I think Jackson Vasquez, he has a big game here. I really do. And Lake Orion's defense, they shut down a pretty good Clarkson offense last week. Farmington's got a lot of speed. Good quarterback in Anthony Bailey. Uh, but I just think depth's going to be an issue for Farmington. I think that, um, I think depth's an issue. If Lake Orion is on a mission, Farmington's got no chance this game. So I'm going to take Lake Orion in this one. Pretty convincingly, it'll be on Farmington TV 10. Um, I know the guys very well there. But I'm going to take Lake Orion in this one. This could be a, um, this could be, it, it'd be very interesting, but I just think Lake Orion will win this one. I mean, like, I don't know if it's a semi-blowout, but I think Lake Orion wins this one, but Lake Orion better be careful of a letdown. I mean, Farmington, they're a good enough team. They're 5-2 and two for a reason. So, we'll see how that one goes. Um, North Farmington and Adams. Um, this is going to be a good one. I think it's going to be a good one. I mean, North Farmington sits, I mean, start off 0-2, 1-5 straight. Had that big win last week against Seaholm. Um, Terrence James is a very good quarterback. Duke Blanche, very good running back. Taking on, um, taking on a very good quarterback, um, duo, of course, got, um, the Carter Ferris. Um, I gotta remember my Ferris's. I gotta remember him. But, they do have a running back in Mateo Humbert. You have Lash and Tillerson. They got a good defense. Um, so, we'll see. We'll see how that one goes. We'll see what it, we'll see how that one goes. So it'll be interesting to see how that matchup goes. So in this one, I'm gonna take Adams in this one because of the option. I think Adams wins that one because of the um because of the triple option attack. I think they have um, but it'll be a tight game. I think it'll be a really tight game there. I think Adams will um. I think Adams will um, win this one. I think it'll be tight, but you never know. North Farmington, they're a team that they could surprise some people. Um, so we'll see what happens. We will see what happens in that one. So it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. So, you know, I've got, I've got, I mean, like I got Adams in that one winning that one. And then last but not least, we got, um, West Bloomfield and Seaholm. This is going to be a preview of this is going to be a preview of um you know for West Bloomfield. This is basically their season. This is basically going to be their season because yes, if they win one or two, I would put them in safely. But if they win both games. They're in the playoffs. They knock off Seaholm. They knock off Roseville. They're both they're in the playoffs. If they lose both games, they're out. They win one or two, they're going to be sweating. Seaholm's coming off a 24-23 loss to North Farm. It's a game they should have won. It's a game they should have won. I kind of asked myself that question. What if Coach Devall decided to kick the extra point, go to overtime? Instead of going for the win. I mean, yeah, they had a chance to recover the onside kick when they threw an interception and seal it. In this game here, the key's going to be is West Bloomfield's defense. Their defense needs to grow up quick. You got playmakers. You got Jeremiah Benson there. You got Will Espy there. They're going to have to play a clean game. Because penalties have killed West Bloomfield. They have. You're going up against a team that runs severe. In that environment, in Birmingham. But West Bloomfield's played a tougher schedule. They have two very dangerous players in Elijah Durham and Cam Flowers. Josh Tate's had a nice year for them. Comes down to the quarterback situation. It comes down to quarterback. I like West Bloomfield in this game because of the schedule that they played. Seaholm, you know, we don't know where their mind's at after that heartbreaking loss. Now they're going to have to share the title with North Farmington. Or 
if North finds and beats Troy, you know what I mean? North wins the title outright. So, in this game here, I got West Bloomfield. West Bloomfield needs this game badly. If they get this game, they're in the playoffs. Then they wouldn't have to worry about that Roseville game. But this is the game they need. I got West Bloomfield winning this one. Tight against Seaholm. I mean, we'll see what happens. We will, we pretty much will. So we'll see what happens. I right, man, I'm gonna sign off here. Make sure to follow the blog at Saturday for this video at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OAA. Wish everybody the best of luck. We have soccer districts continuing. So we'll see how that one goes and we'll see what happens going forward. I right, man, I'm gonna sign off here. Take care, God bless. And I'll see y'all next week. Everybody take care and I'll see you then. God bless and God bless. Them.